Right, in my last video I showed how I actually stripped down this set to air rifle um, because I was having a problem with it building up too much pressure after shooting for some time and the air wasn't actually coming out of the um, reservoir properly into the actual barrel and I have actually found out the problem. And what it is, is this o-ring here shouldn't have been on the front of the valve assembly someone's been into the rifle at some point and put that one on it's either meant to seal with metal to metal contact in the air rifle or there was some sealant or a very thin fiber washer on the end there and i did actually find that out by looking on various pictures online and also the breakdown or the exploded view of this rifle I couldn't see this o-ring on that drawing at all and like I say someone's been in there put this one on and it's quite a thick o-ring and I found that when it's being pushed up to the shoulder inside where it's meant to seal it's pushing this off by the thickness of the o-ring and this diameter here is partly covering the transfer port to the barrel so when the air is coming through these four holes here not all the air is actually going through the barrel because it's partly blocked and it does have to have a seal on the front there of some type um, like I say it could have been a metal to metal uh, contact seal when it was new so what I've done um, I've made up a PTFE seal and it's only 10 thou thick to actually go on the front of that one so I reckon now, when I screw that one home, it's going to be in the correct position when that PTFE washer squashes a bit as well, so that this diameter here doesn't block that transfer port. And I turned several of these up, um, different thicknesses, to try them, but I'm going to try the 10 thou one first. And you can see there that it fits on there nicely. They're very easy to make up actually. And if you, um, like I say, turn a bar and bore a bar to the same um, diameter that you need to go over that one, you can actually make a part off tool up with a special angle on it so that when you actually part the um, seals off, there's no burr left whatsoever on the back. And I'll show you how I do that sometime. And therefore you can actually use the um, seals straight off of the lathe. And I did the same with the PTFE seal that goes on the back end where the lead washer would have been. Or the lead seal. I've made up a batch of those of six so I've got some spare ones. And just one word of caution when machining and handling PTFE. Make sure you wash your hands afterwards before eating or um, touching your mouth or whatever. If you get the contaminant in your mouth from the PTFE from unwashed hands, it can cause flu-like symptoms. I've polished up the pump assembly here and I've actually fitted the original um, seal because the actual rubber on that one is very good it's still pliable and it was actually pumping okay before I actually took the rifle apart I did make a PTFE one with an o-ring and that one works perfectly so if you can't get hold of one of these in the future you can actually make a PTFE one up like this with an o-ring that clips in the end and the, like I say they work perfectly so I'm going to actually keep that one as a spare So now I'm going to put this into the um, rifle, into the pump chamber, and I use silicon lubricant grease. I only use it on the outer diameter of the rubber seal, not on the front, and not in the actual pump chamber of the rifle. If you put it on the front or in the pump chamber, some of that grease can get pushed into the valve assembly, and you don't want that. So just put it on the diameter here and I do actually put some on um, this part here when I've got this part into the pump chamber. So that one goes down and then I put the 
arm into that one, the pump arm. And the actual pin is a loose fit pin with rounded ends, so it actually pushes into that one by hand. And the rounded ends there don't mark the bronze. So that one just pushes in like that. And then I can push that one down in the slot. I forgot to mention there that um, on this assembly here, it's the long slot that goes to the underside of the rifle. And I push it down to the cutout bit there. So I will just put some silicon grease on that back part if I put it back in there. And any excess uh, grease on the parts that I've shown and in the places that I've shown will only get dragged backwards with the pump. It won't actually get into that valve assembly. And then the pump chamber end piece here, you can see which way it goes in by the holes. It's the long slot at the um, underside here. That one goes into that bore there and then put that one up in that housing and line up the holes ready for the roll pin. And I just support it on my rubber block there to knock the um, roll pins in. And one of the roll pins is very slightly shorter and that one goes to the top. So that goes into the top hole here. And the other one goes into the arm there. And I don't knock them all the way down because there's a um, danger of actually damaging the bronze here. I use my specially made up punch which fits inside the roll pen to knock it down to its position. Like that and I forgot to mention I uh, put the chamfered end of the roll pin in first and this is the actual um, punch that I made up it's got a diameter here which fits inside the roll pin so it can't actually slip out and damage the bronze here and obviously this diameter is um, smaller than the diameter of the roll pin so it's a great tool for actually knocking roll pins out or in without any chance of actually slipping off and damaging the exterior part of the rifle. So now I can actually pick that rifle up and pump it. And you can actually hear that pump working. So that's okay. So before I put the valve housing in, I'm going to put the bolt action back in and I'm going to put some silicon grease on that one, on the um, O-ring. Put that one in and then put it round into that position there. You could have it round the wrong way, the small hole at the back there and the bolt action around this side. It must be round the side like that so that you can get at the hole that the little spigot goes into so position that one over the cutout there hold it in place and screw that one in carefully with your fingers 
as far as you can get it to go like that and then just nip that one up with a pair of pliers there's a bit of a square end on the end of that one so you can use the pliers on the flats and you have a have to actually um, screw it right the way home until it locks in there like that and then it will clear the side of the um, uh, actual bore of the back end here the side of the gun and go down inside for pulling back the hammer so that one looks like that and you can see it clearing that side and going down inside if it's not screwed in far enough it will actually clip the side of the gun there and it won't actually allow the um, bolt action to go up into position to pull the hammer back the covers go back over the bolt action assembly first there's an angle plate there that goes on and that goes on just behind the spigot on the bolt action assembly like that and then you have the cover which goes round that way and that covers the spigot part up and I find these Atchaman screwdriver sets really good for working on air rifles there's just about every tool that you need in there and an extension a demagnetizer which is very handy and the actual screwdriver handles are brilliant you've got this um, bearing part here which sits in the palm of your hand so you can actually turn them they're really excellent sets and I've got a few um, Atchaman sets plus I've got the electronic screwdriver they make I really need to get some new screws for this part here and um, the threads have actually gone on that back one so at some point I shall replace that one so now I'm ready to put the valve assembly in with the springs and this is the non-return valve um, that goes between the um, pump chamber and the reservoir this one did have a rubber seal but I've changed it now to PTFE and it's just a brass plate with a, um, a actual spigot part on the back there with a little groove in between and all I did was make up a small um, PTFE seal there like that and pushed it on until it clicked over so that one just drops down into the rifle and hopefully it goes up the right way it seldom does but what you do then is just jog the rifle about until you flip it over inside and then when it's flipped over you can actually see the brass plate facing towards you next it's the non-return valve spring then it's the bronze washer then it's the main valve spring and this one's a tapered spring the wide end goes down on the um, non-return valve and this part here actually fits over the shoulder on the front of the valve seal so remember the widest end in first and now I'm ready to put the valve assembly in so before I put the valve in I just check the faces that they're both really nice and clean wipe them around with a bit of tissue or whatever and then put the valve in there like that I have put a bit of silicon grease around the shoulder here and any excess will actually blow out of the rifle then I've put my newly made PTFE seal on the front of that one and then I put the 
PTFE seal on the back. This was um, where the lead seal would go. That's the original lead seal one. This is the PTFE ones that I've made up. And then I get my tool. Now this tool, uh, when I made it, it's made out of a piece of 8mm bond. I um, said how I made it on my last video about this gun. It's just a bit of 8mm mild steel and I've filed off the uh, corners up to a certain point. Now when I took the nut out of the um, rifle the first time that was okay to take it out but when I went to put the uh, valve housing back in again I couldn't actually get the threads to locate and what it was was the end of the tool was protruding too far through the nut and preventing me actually pushing the nut down to take up the first thread so what I did was just put this on a disc sander and um, took the face off until it's about flush with the end face of the nut. So that one goes on the assembly like that. And now I can feed it down inside carefully. and start that one off. And tighten that up nicely. And I get a towel to hold it and just make sure that one's really tight. And you can use a small diameter bar, like a piece of aluminium, smaller than the bore here, just to test that that valve is working on the spring. And that appears to be working excellently. So next it's the hammer assembly. And then the spring with the spring guide. That one goes down into the hole in the back of the hammer. And then you take the back end assembly and push that one home like that and then put the pin in And that sounds really good. And 
and it's working excellently and not keeping any pressure inside so I think I've cured the problem so at the beginning of the video I showed how I fitted the original pump seal and halfway through I realized that this one is too worn and isn't enough to actually push the air through under pressure so I've changed back to the one that I actually made, the PTFE one with the O-ring and in future videos I hope to show how to actually make these um, piston seals and also how they actually click into the end of the actual um, component on the um, pump and I also hope to show how to make other PTFE items like uh, the actual valve seals and all these things can be made on a small metal lathe easily and it is actually quite a great hobby to actually repair air rifles and actually get into taking them apart seeing how they work and getting them going again like I've done with this one So now that I know that the gun is working perfectly, I can actually put the molybdenum disulfide grease in the back there. At first you saw me put in silicon grease in and that was only to assemble it. I always put silicon grease around the rubber o-rings or the seals though. But now I know that I'm not going to take it apart again and I wouldn't have to clean it down again if I had put the molybdenum grease in I can actually put it in at this stage and this actually helps the pump assembly to run really lovely and smoothly and quietly plus because I'm putting it in the back end here when the pump assembly comes back it pulls that grease with it so it won't actually get into the seal area but you can hear there already how nice and smooth and quiet that is and one other thing that I've got to do on the pump area here is put a piece of very thin rubber glued in here so that when it comes back it doesn't make too much noise when it hits the um, bronze And just before I finish, I'd just like to mention something. Um, I normally buy 5.5 millimeter 22 pellets for my um, modern air rifles, but I found with a lot of older air rifles, this type of um, ammo is loose in the barrel. Really, these old guns need the 5.6 22 pellets. And you can still get those. Um, there are several makers that actually make the 5.6 uh, version of the pellet. And if you actually do get the 5.6, they'll be nice and tight in the barrel, whereas these are too loose.